IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. A great mix of young drivers looking to make a career in motorsport and those who still just do their motor racing for fun. It's the second half of the season and the paddock has reconvened at the marvellous venue of Watkins Glen International in upstate New York. Hello everybody, I'm John Hindor from IMSA Radio and Jeremy Shaw will be alongside me in a few moments time for our second race of the weekend. The weather is absolutely perfect, perhaps a little too hot in the heat of the day, but this early morning start for our second Porsche Cup race means that the conditions are just about perfect. The Finger Lakes region of upstate New York, very popular with tourists, and you've only got to look at the countryside around here to understand why that's the case. And the Watkins Glen International Circuit, just under three and a half miles, has challenged everything from Formula One, NASCAR, and of course, the endurance racing GT and sports cars down through the years. And its character hasn't changed very much since the day that it was carved out of the rolling green countryside. Incident and accident already through practice and qualifying. Indeed, our race two pole sitter Trent and Estep, a little fortunate to be out there. Yeah, to, to be even on track right now is kind of a miracle. Uh, we had a little bit of incident Thursday afternoon. Um, and uh, went in the wall in turn 11 and then got hit by another competitor. But the, the guys at JDX stayed up all night uh, Thursday and Friday morning to get the car fixed. So to be able to, to be on poles is really remarkable from the guys at JDX. So to even be here is awesome. As always, two different types of cars. The Gen 2 are the Platinum class. Black number panels and black mirrors. Gold class have yellow mirrors and yellow number panels. A little less power and downforce for those gold class cars. Pretty tidy start to our first race of the weekend. Then a problem for Greg Palmer, who lost it coming into the heel of the boot. Mark Kavame diving down the inside and spinning Victor Gomez the fourth. And that brought a drive through penalty for Mark, penalised for initiating that contact. Fred Podad also taking a run through the grass on the inner loop. And at the front of the field, Roman De Angelis wins in the platinum class, whilst in gold, Kurt Vesigas took the top step of the podium. The field in behind the bright red Porsche safety car. Well, not quite right behind it at the moment. They need to pack up a little bit as we come round with the green flag. We'll be racing at Watkins Glen International next. Second of two races for the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama here at Watkins Glen International. It's the seal and six hours of the Glen IMSA weekend. There's a big crowd and my, they are knowledgeable and love their sports cars. This Porsche Cup, one of the development series, and watch out for these names in the future. Trenton Estep and Roman De Angelis on the front row. Trenton with a big thank you to his JDX team who had to rebuild his Porsche after he was caught out with a passing shower of rain on Thursday. He was on slick tyres, lost the car in the wall. Victor Gomez on row five is our Gold Cup pole sitter. He's got quite a few platinum guys behind him. That's a feather in his cap. Inside of row seven, Kurt Fasigas is the gold winner from yesterday and he will be looking to make up some ground and put pressure on Victor Gomez who is leading that category to the green flag here. Looks like they're all out on the circuit. Sebastian Carrazzo, the 27 car, was the other car involved in that incident on Thursday and that car also back out there. Perfect formation coming out of the penultimate corner of the second pace lap. The Porsche Turbo is already in the pit lane. The field is under control of Paul Mann, Trent and Estep. The black and gold classic Hertz colours will bring the field round to a green flag, which is not yet in the air. Now it is, and we're racing. Good breakaway from the pole sitter. Heads down towards turn number one. He's got half a car's length, but that's all. Coming round the out.
outside is Roman De Angelis, Maxwell Root in the white and red car has a look down the inside, David Kaufman getting a good run as well as he did down in the first corner yesterday at the start and he's eased himself up I think into fourth position, yes he has ahead of Gregory Boss three wide going through the S's further back down the field and there's a slight intake of breath from Jeremy Shaw and myself there because we've seen that happen before Bill Smith in the uh, burnt orange number 42 going around David Baker there I think to try and get to try and get on terms with Kirk Fazekas who is one of the other GT3 gold class cars two different types of cars here Gen 1 and Gen 2 for the cup cars the latest versions of the cup cars Platinum class cars with black door numbers and mirrors and gold headlights, gold mirrors and gold door squares for the gold category. And it's all gold at the moment at the front, well, black and gold anyway for Trenton Estep, who has done the job that he needed to do, Jeremy, and has just eased out away from the field. That was a picture-perfect start, absolutely perfect formation coming up to the green flag. Great start there by Trenton Estep, jumped onto the throttle. Uh, Roman DeAndre thought about trying to go around the outside of Turn 1, but uh, Trenton was having none of that. Nice, clean start. I'll tell you what, they're over at the, uh, the inner loop. The number three car, the race leader, Trenton Esso, he got a lot of air coming off that corner. He got, he hit that last, uh, well, the the third curb effectively pretty hard. The car was way up in the air, but kept control, no bra no dramas. He leads this motor race from Roman De Andres in second place. Cracking scrap going on for eighth, ninth, and tenth position behind Fred Pordard in the bright blue Porsche. Here comes the blue and Etruscan orange machine. Mark Kavame having a look at Charlie Luck and Mike Levitas is in there as well. Victor Gomez in that fight as well. Victor Gomez having a look down the inside. But Kavame has gone through. Kavame has gone through into 10th position ahead of the number 25. Now they came together on the Saturday race and Victor Gomez lost the lead of the Gold Cup category when Mark Kavame ran into him. This time Kavame has made a clean pass and goes through into 10th position. They're not in the same class. I don't think Victor Gomez was overly impressed with the uh, rather desperate lunge that Mark Kavame put on him in the race yesterday, which cost him a shot at the win. He recovered very well and came in third finish. position, yes, Victor right. Gomez. But that was he will think of that as points lost, Jeremy, not points gained, I think. He will. The good news is he has a pretty handy advantage over Kurt Fazekas. It was uh, 21 points coming into the weekend, and even with Kurt Fazekas winning yesterday for the second time this season in the Gold Cup Class 4 Kelly Moss Road race, it's still a 16 point edge for Victor Gomez uh, coming into today's eighth round and the halfway point in the season. Two races planned for each event weekend. And we've had four events. This is the fourth of eight events, as Jeremy says, which will go to, I'm sure. We'll be counting points all the way to the season finale at the Petit Le Mans event in Broad Atlanta in October. Certainly that's what happened in the Gold Cup category last year. Trenton Estep leads, but only by half a minute. The battle's further down the field then, coming to the end of another lap, leading out a little group of five or six cars. The 34 is 12th in Platinum Masters. It's the white car coming to the final corner now. Then behind him, Kurt Fazek is second in that dark purple and green, almost old Porsche 908 hippie type colors and 917s. And he's gonna lose a position down to turn one as through comes the white and red number 23. And that's uh, Fred Keimer coming through the field. Fazek is then down to 16th position, still second in class. The problem for Fazekas is there's more cars now between himself and the class leader, Victor Gomez, who's up in 11th. Nobody ahead of Trenton Estep, who's going through the inner loop now with Roman De Angelis. Roman De Angelis just sitting in second position, just starting to feel a little bit of heat from Maxwell Root. Max Root in the red-fronted car with the white and blue styling on it. He's in third, and then David Kolkman in the dark grey with the red and white stripes on a Park Place Motorsport. He's in fourth position in the 71. And those third and fourth place cars, Max Root and David Kolkman, they were absolutely almost tied together as they came across the start finish line. But a great run through turn one and through the S's. A purple sector one oh. for Maxwell Root. 
issue for the... Number 20, that's Fred Porter. That yeah, is. Fred Porter, who was well up inside the top 10, and in fact was leading the Platinum Indeed. Masters category ahead of Alan Metney, and he's off at turn one, and there's damage to that car. Now, this may bring out the bright red Porsche Turbo safety car. We've only had five minutes of racing, right rear damage to the number 20, and Fred looks like he's going to try and drive it out of harm's way. He's over to the pit lane exit at turn one, uh, which means he's not on the racing line. No pit stop scheduled for this race, so he might be all right there. Are we going to need a full course yellow? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Double yellow flags out at the start finish line, just down to our left from the IMSA radio broadcast booth. And Estep will be able to take a breather. Could not break away. IMSA Porsche Cayenne GTS heading to the scene of the problem. In fact, there's one already there. The second one's already on its way. Fred's fine. There's just a little bit of discussion on about how that car's going to be recovered. That's a shame. He, he, was, he had a super run this oh. weekend. He had his uh, career best qualifying yesterday. That, Jeremy, I was wrong. I thought he was in the pit lane exit. In fact, he's facing the wrong way on the outside of turn one. Uh, I had him on the wrong side of the track there. He rather fooled me by pointing the wrong direction. And so he's right in the runoff at turn one. And that's why the safety car has come out. That's an absolutely correct call by yep. race control. He was in harm's way. Uh, secondary impacts are always to be avoided. And it's the back of the car that's had damage. And I'm not sure they can even move that car at the moment with the bodywork pushed onto the right rear wheel and Yokohama tyre. So that is uh, a mistake on my part. Thought he was on driver's right. He is, in fact, on driver's left, right in the firing line on the exit of turn one. No option but to throw the double yellows and get the safety car out. And that's exactly what's happened so that the safety team can work at the exit of turn one. Yeah, Fred Pordad uh, returning for another full season this year in the championship, running for Kelly for, for Wright Motorsports uh, from San Antonio, Texas. He's a, a liver specialist, actually. He's a researcher at the University of Texas these days. And uh, he's been racing for, for a long time, started out with a boxer back in 09, ran the Gold Cup for a couple of years and platinum cars pretty much since uh, 2013. But yesterday, he qualified in sixth position today he qualified in seventh, but yesterday that, that sixth position on the grid, that was his best ever. So he'd, he had a good weekend going. Uh, fell back a few places yesterday, but still it's been a strong weekend for Fred. He'd finished uh, second in the platinum class uh, back in the second round at Sebring. Uh, and I say he had some difficulties yesterday, but a good strong early run. And unfortunately this morning, it's come to an early halt his race. The safety car is still leading round the competitors for the second race of the weekend here at Watkins Glen International for the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. And even in the sunshine, I can still see that the safety car lights are on. So clean up after the accident, not quite done. I'm John Hindhoff and Jeremy Shaw is having a look at the front of the field. What are you looking at, Jeremy? A glimpse of the number three car, the, the uh, Hertz JDX racing car at the front of the field. You can see there's a, a, a grey bumper on the back of that car. Uh, the, the, uh, the front of the car looks fine, but underneath that bodywork on the front, an entire new front end, a few front subframe grafted onto that car after the impact on Thursday afternoon. A remarkable job by Ellie, uh, Larry Ellis and the rest of that JDX team to get that car repaired again in time for yesterday's race and a brilliant effort yesterday by Trenton Estep to set the fastest lap of the race in the late stages to finish a very strong second place. Well, it now appears that there was contact between Fred Purdad and his number 20 car and the arm core, the blue metal fencing at the exit of turn one. Once again, the winch on the Watkins Glen track services pickup truck being pressed into use or pulled into use, I suppose. Along with a, that looks like a 10 pound lump hammer to me, possibly a 15, being wielded with some skill there by our track services team down at the exit of turn one. So we're not quite able to go green despite the fact that poor dad's car has been removed on a flatbed and is already on the way to the trailer. 
So there's going to be another lap or so underneath, uh, under the control, rather, of the safety car. The Porsche Turbo, which leads the field around, the one of the new iterations of the 911, which has been in production now continuously for oh, well over 55 years. Coming out of the inner loop at the moment, leading the field around. Now, did I just see the safety car lights going off there with 31 minutes to go? Let me check with race control and see if we get the message. Yep, safety car lights are out. Safety car lights are out on the chute, running down into turn number six, that tricky downhill left-hander with zero runoff on the exit. You get it wrong, you're in real trouble. Having a quick look at Alan Metney's car, the iFly sponsored machine, and couldn't see any damage. It might, must have been the slightest of contact that is being looked at by the race field, or at least will be looked at after the race. Yeah, so cl clearly there was nothing sort of um, overtly nasty down there. It must have been, and it only takes the briefest of, of touches. Oh, you're on the edge, cars are you? right on the limit down to head downhill into turn one and carrying a lot of speed through there. Trenton Estep produced a perfect getaway in the side by side run to the green flag some 15 minutes ago to start this second race of the Watkins Glen International Race Weekend for the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. Now he has to do it again. His slight advantage is there's no one alongside him. It's a single file restart, and that's what they're coming back to now. We'll have around about 29 minutes of the 45 to go. Estep backing them up. The safety car has cleared out and is heading into the pit lane now coming through the final corner and is now in the pit lane. And the boot was on the other foot yesterday because those front two were, were uh, it transposed in terms of positions and uh, Trent Nessert certainly will have seen what Roman DeAndres still did yesterday. He got on the throttle as they went into the final corner. Exactly, he's learned and Estep is on the loud pedal, nice and early. Green, 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 overtaking, going on behind, but that's fine, the green flag is out. 29 minutes to go, bar five seconds as they came across the line, and Estep gets an even better start. A little bit of a slide by De Angelis yeah. on cold front. Yoga. And De Angelis is off. De Angelis has gone off. He slid into the first corner. Maybe not quite enough heat in the Yoga as he went downhill there. It's a really tricky, over, a tricky breaking point because you carry momentum down the hill, and he's going to be under pressure from Maxwell Root, who gets a good run out of the S's. Maxwell's Max Root. Uh, Eyes must have lit up there for a moment. Defensive in the middle of the road. De Angelis will keep hold of second position as they go. Oh, Oops. and off behind them. It's the 27. That's Carrazzo. That's the second time he's been involved in an incident today. That was side, uh, this weekend, rather. That's the rebuilt car. Only got back here late yesterday afternoon. The NGT boys took it away some, what, three hours up the road to a body shop. And that's going to be another full course yellow. 74 going through there is the... Kirkar. Now he just, I think he just checked up to yeah. miss what was going on. So is that Wayne to Courtney's car? No, it, I it, fear it, it might be because Wayne was directly ahead of him yeah. at the restart. The 73 year old. In the 73 car, yeah. it's come, they've come to a halt right next to uh, Marshall's point. There's bits of Porsches that we don't need to be seeing lying on the road. Yeah. And that accident happened fairly early. Yeah, no, it is to Courtney, and it was Carrazzo trying to go around the well, outside, or was it Wayne? Yes, it must have been Carrazzo trying to go around the outside because Wayne restarted ahead. Side by side contact with the uh, right front wheel of Carrazzo to the left front wheel of Wayne de Courtney, and they do stick out at the bottom, and that's all it needed. That was kind of weird because you know Carrazzo was ah. kind of mainly past. Uh, Ducody there as they're going through that S, the S is there, plenty of room on his left. With the benefit of another look at it, it was uh, rear wheel contact, right. rear wheel contact, side to side. Oh. Yeah, I think so. I just saw a little puff of smoke, Jeremy, as Carrazzo was going around the outside. So whether Rear wheel of number 27 car, front, yes. front wheel of the uh, 73 car. Yes. Yes, I agree, yes. Yes. 
So, so I know, thought Carazza it was, was almost, almost past him. He was sort of three quarters of the way past, and there was plenty of room to the left of Wayne there. So that was a, a slightly strange incident. You do, sort of, dr you do yeah. sort of drift out there. Are you coming out of a right hander, or you're going round a, a right hander, and you can sort of just drift out? It's flat, absolutely flat up there, even on a restart. Oh, but, oh is it? Uh, as soon as you get over the top of the hill. Oh, when yeah. you get over the top of the hill, yes. Yeah. Yes. And they were over the top of the hill there. They were coming into the last section of it. There's going to be debris on the circuit here. The safety car is at that point. Uh, Carrazzo, oh, well, not happy. Uh, he, the contact was certainly on the rear end of his car, so he's, he's already had an incident this weekend, so... Uh, Wayne Decourt, he's not very happy disappointed. Uh, with what's, go what's happened. And uh, Carrazzo is out of his car, and he's not happy either. Wayne Decourt is wearing the white suit and Carrazzo's going down towards him and uh, motioning that he should have been watching his mirrors I think is uh, what I'm reading from the body language I don't think I'd be putting them in the same recovery vehicle it, and Carrazzo needs to calm himself down a little bit here I know he's had a nasty shock but he's not going to do himself any good 50 year Age differential there between those two. 52 years, actually. Well, Wayne Decote, it feels comfortable enough to take his helmet off. He's getting into the back of the GTS Cayenne. Carrazzo is directly ahead of him, still with helmet on, and the cleanup will continue. <laughs> Incidentally, the uh, when, when by the time they came past here, Max Root had managed to get past Roman Dianchi. Right. We didn't see where that happened because certainly when they went into the inner loop, uh, having made that mistake down at turn one, uh, Roman Dianchi was, was defending and he Correct. seemed to have held that adv the advantage through the inner loop. So he must have lost it later on in the lap. But Max Root uh, has appeared now in second place in car number seven ahead of number one. I am the trusty co-pilot. The moving part that moves all 2,000 parts. I am the translator who interprets the road, the permission to take the scenic route, and the guide that gets you there safely. I'm not just any tire. I am a Yokohama. The all new IMSA app. Whether at home or trackside, get behind the scenes with team and driver access all the time. It's the ultimate in fan experience. Choose your favorite manufacturer and strap in for the ride. With live scoring data, radio commentary, and session results in real time, it's just like you're there in Winner's Circle. The all new IMSA app. Download it today. Twenty-four minutes to go, Jeremy, and this is going to be another lengthy clean-up. We were just praising the guys uh, on the Saturday race for how well they had behaved themselves, and when you don't have to save your car for another race for the weekend, it's all gone mm. a little bit pear-shaped. But uh, Trent and Estep will still be leading when yeah. they come back round again. And that was a, 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 almost a mirror image of yesterday's restart there with a, a brilliant restart by... Uh, Trenton Essek got a good jump coming off that final corner, a clear lead into turn one, and and uh, in second place, Roman Dangers to try to carry the same sort of speed in there, but as you were saying, suggesting, I think Yokohama Tire's not quite up to, fully up to temperature, trying to carry a bit too much speed through the apex, round wide at the exit, le le left him vulnerable as they went onto the back straight, and ultimately the pass was made by Max Reed. Also a, a change of position in the lead of the Masters class, because Michael ah. Novitas in kind of 36, found a way past Alan Metney's number 99 on that restart lap. Yeah, uh, it's still Victor Gomez, the fourth in the 25 car in 10th position that leads the gold category for the Gen 1 Type 991s, 911s. Uh, the car got very, very loose on turning for Roman De Angelis, and then he was fighting it. And thank goodness there's a lot of runoff down there but that really killed his exit from turn one and ultimately allowed the pass to be made later in the lap by Maxwell Root it looked to me as though he just lost the back end of the car Jeremy as he was breaking into turn one and 
that at that point he wasn't going to make the apex and he was running out of road. Plenty of runoff there at turn one. It is dusty and dirty as well, which is a, another thing that may have caused De Angelis some problems with uh, a bit of crud on the tyres. Yeah, very much so. And that could take a lap or two to clean off. And young Max Root deciding that uh, he would take the opportunity. Hearing from race control that the current order behind the safety car is being looked at to make sure it's right for when the full course yellows came out, of course. If there was any passing post that, then that will have to be redressed. Cleanup crew on site of the two-car incident that has seen Ducati and Carrazzo's cars come together, 73 and 27, already out of the running. Fred Poordat had a brush with the Turn 1 exit wall in the number 20, possibly after contact with the number 99, Alan Metney. That incident will be reviewed after the race. The incident between the two drivers that I just mentioned, Ducati and Carrazzo, well, I'm sure that will be looked at as well, but both of those cars are out of the race, so penalties not to be applied, but perhaps a little chat with one or both of those drivers. That is at the discretion of the race director, of course. There'll just be a bit of a worry about any debris on the circuit around that incident. Uh, we've lost yeah, another heap of time, and if this is gonna be a sprint to the line with cars that are still relatively heavy because they haven't used a, a lot of fuel but still have a lot of life in their Yokohama tyres. It's very, very light contact side to side between Carrazzo and Ducote. It was definitely a left front of uh, of Ducote's car to the uh, to the rear of uh, of Carrazzo's car. So I can certainly understand why Sebastian is upset there. He was had been making, you know, presumably making the pass, and he seemed to be pretty much all the way around. There was plenty of room on, on either side of the road. They were kind of in the middle of the track at that point because you're kind of transitioning, as you were suggesting a little while ago, through the S's there. It's a very, very far, fast, fast part of the course. The unmistakable sound of flat six engines means that it's the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. Second race of the Watkins Glen weekend on the Sealand's six hour of six hours of the Glen IMSA weekend. One of the IMSA development series. The safety car has turned off the amber flashing lights on the top of that glorious Porsche 911 Turbo that is leading the field around and we will go back to green flag racing. The incident that has given us all of this full course yellow between Carrazzo and Ducote will be reviewed after the race, but both of those cars are looking um, somewhat pre-loved. Bit second-hand, the pair of those, and they'll need some work before the August race at Road America. Now it's down to Trent and Estep, and this time it's Maxwell Root right on his tailpipes. He went hard just into the entry of the final corner on the last restart. He's weaving left and right, which he shouldn't really be doing once the safety car is gone. And he gets a good start, not quite at the gap that he had last time around, but goes across the line and down towards turn one, 14 and a half minutes to go, and Root's right there. Root is closing in, less than a Porsche's length between the meantime, down the inside, oh, straight on. It's turn number one, Anthony Imperato, who's a long way down the field and has just gone straight on. Where did he start? Sixth position and went straight on at the first corner. Managed to pull up that machine just before clipping the outer barriers. And I think he'll be back in the fight. Meantime, Victor Gomez and Mark Cavame were going back at, at each other again as well in the braking area as the leader goes through the inner loop. And, Touring car style gets the front of the car off the ground as he clobbers the kerb. 
it's quite unusual to see people doing that through there because it doesn't settle the car, but he's yeah. getting it, Jeremy, very straight before he does that. Very clever piece of driving. Yeah, he did it at the very beginning of the race as well. I noted that the car was quite, seemed to be quite a long way in the air. Maxwell Root there putting a wheel on the grass coming oh, out dear. of the ankle of the boot there. Here's another view of the restart. Once again, that was a good restart by Maxwell. Really kept right, the pressure right on Trent and Estep. Now, what Looking happened to Imperato? Did he just miss his braking area? On. Yes, he did. But interestingly, uh, it looked to me as though Victor Gomez got by Mark Kavame. As he, oh, was that Charlie Luck going it past? It was Charlie Luck. Yeah. Charlie Luck going past Victor Gomez. Sorry, yeah. got that the wrong way around. Yes, uh, Victor in the blue, light blue car. But that—that's a position lost for Victor. But it doesn't change the fact that he's still leading the gold category. It's been a good restart lap for Trent and Estep, who's going to come to the line with a huge gap between himself and Maxwell Root. After that mistake at uh, turn number six, he's now coming under pressure. Great battles, DeAngelis and Coltman going at it down into turn one. Coltman down the inside. Doesn't quite have the overlap, but he's got a nice run. Tries to go on the right-hand side, going up the hill, but then drops back in. Taking the draft from the car ahead. Roman De Angelis in the Kelly Moss Road and Race prepared machine. The white car with the green stripes on it through turn four, the scene of the accident that has cost us so much racing time. Now barely a dozen minutes to go to the chequered flag. That's right, and uh, the... Battle for second place is pretty intense there. Maxwell Root, his previous best finish is a third place coming into this round. So he's uh, looking to get one step higher onto the podium. That came actually in his debut at Sebring, the first race of the season he finished in third place. Since then, his best result uh, up until yesterday when he finished third also had been a couple of fifth place finishes. So it's been a good weekend for young Maxwell Root. Sitting at the moment in that second position, but fully uh, a second and a half behind the leader after that small mistake. But he's got a little bit of a breathing space between himself and Roman De Angelis. Then it's Colkman, who's just a tenth or so further back. Those three are where the action is at the moment. 7-1 and 71, disputing second place with Trenton Estep in the number three, gold and black. JDX racing car, and a bit of grey this weekend with the new rear valance and bumper on that car. Victor Gomez still leading the GT3 Gold category ahead of Fazekas in second and Bill Smith backing up his career best second place finish in that category yesterday with a third on the road so far but he's got Rob Furriel right in behind him in the five keep an eye on that as well lead has gone through here comes second third and fourth as I say them they go underneath the IMSA radio booth, Coltman down the inside again on De Angelis. They're side by side through the exit of turn one. And Imperato rejoining from the pit lane just to their right. That was an inopportune moment for that to happen. Still side by side through the S's. Oh, come on, guys, play clever. Yes, they did. That was good driving by both. I was heart in the mouth there. We've seen all sorts of incidents there in the past. But it looks Dave. like Col Colton's got a, a quick car at the moment, Jeremy. He does indeed. As we've seen on, on all of the restarts, all starts this season, he's been right away, right on the gas, right away. He gets that, uh, the tyres up to temperature right away. He's really able to push hard early in a stint, and that was heads-up driving by Colton. If he'd have pressed the issue there, that could have ended in disaster. He very wisely, I, th I believe, just backed off just enough to allow the number one car to, to maintain its slight edge. I am the trusty co-pilot. The moving part that moves all 2,000 parts. I am the translator who interprets the road, the permission to take the scenic route, and the guide that gets you there safely. I'm not just any tire. I am a Yokohama. The all-new IMSA app. Whether at home or trackside, get behind the scenes with team and driver access all the time. It's the ultimate in fan experience. Choose your favorite manufacturer and strap in for the ride. With live scoring data, radio commentary, and session results in real time, it's just like you're there in Winner's Circle. The all-new IMSA app. Download it today.
Under 10 minutes to go, second race of the weekend for the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama here at Watkins Glen. Second, third and fourth are together. The red, white and blue car is Maxwell Root. That's the number seven in second. Then Roman De Angelis in the white with green. And then in the grey car, that is the German David Coltman. Park Place Porsche supported machine. Already had some success this weekend. They're coming on to the front straight now. Ahead of them, Trent and Estep. The number three car ooh, looks to be pulling away just a little bit from this battle. New fastest lap for Trent and Estep at the front of the field, 52-1. And he's pulling away now, nearly three seconds the advantage from Root to Angelus Kolkman. Then a couple of seconds and more to Boss in fifth place. Alan Metney leads the Masters charge, the 99 car in sixth position. That's right, he got back oh. ahead of, My of Michael Levitt. Victor the Gomez. Restart? Victor Gomez is a problem, is it? Or is that uh, the 43? It's, it's, it's Kavami. Right, he's, yeah. He's I got think. A right front pro problem. Yeah. He went right off at of turn one and he's got a broken right front suspension or steering arm and he's going to do well to get that back. He's on the grass. Now, where was. Mark was battling with uh, Charlie Luck and Mike Levitas, yeah. the three of them, in second, third, and fourth in the Masters category. Well, they were all very, very close. Yeah, the contact between Luck on the inside and Kavami on the outside. Wow, oh, that's a dear. Hard, hard whack. Yeah, and that's broken the front steering on the 43 car. Yes, that was bizarre. Yeah, Luck coming down the inside into turn one. Uh, Thought he had position, but he was drifting out to the outside. Kavami already wide and getting wider. And did he hit the barrier as well? Yes, he did, but he didn't have any steering at that point. Kavami being involved in a few little incidents this weekend. Yeah, I'm not sure was, that one was of his own making. No, I don't think it was either. I mean, he was he was holding position on the outside. It was Charlie Luck that dived to the inside. Got on. The, they both kind of got on the curbs, the exit of the corner, and Charlie Luck's car just sort of took a, a leap to the left, which is where Kavami's car was already uh, on that uh, piece of asphalt. And for what, is this the third time now? Yes. That the safety car will have to send it out for some more fuel at the moment. And this could be all she wrote, I'm afraid, Jeremy. This one has been a bit of an accident fest, which was a shame because we were having a great battle for second, third and fourth there. Trent Nestet won't mind. Get the same number of points for going through the checkers under full course yellow as you do in full green conditions. Hasn't had to take too much out of his Yokohama tyres or his number three JDX run Porsche. Slightly frustrating, I'm sure, for the rest of the drivers. Again, contact rear wheel to front wheel, which broke the steering there. And Kurt Fazekas. The 52 just going past the scene of the accident in the purple and green car. He's going to end up second, I think, in the gold category. Bill Smith will have his second podium of the weekend, a second and a third from him. That'll make him a happy man. But it's going to be Victor Gomez who has a third and a fourth. Excuse me, excuse me, third and a first in that number 25 car. Incident that has put us under full course yellow between Mark Kavame and Charlie Luck under review at the end of the race. Yeah, uh, the be be, yeah they've, got a, they've got a late day today. They thought they were going to be finished relatively early and have a nice long that's, leisurely lunch. That's mid morning in, into their day. That would have been nice. Yeah, it's not happening, no chaps. Luck. This is uh, the, the way this race is going, though. It, it's brilliant news for Trent and Esther, but despite that huge crash he had on Thursday, came away with a second place finish yesterday. Looks like he's going to get the win today. I think we might, we might be able to get back to green. That was weird, that incident there. Just a, a little. Just sort of took off to the left on the, uh, coming out of the corner. Yeah, a little slide. Charlie was coming from a, a long way back, but he did make the corner, and on the exit, slightest of brushes the rear wheel the, the bottom of the the front Yokohama tires and the wheel obviously on which they are mounted uh, talk, we, we talk about camber it means the bottom of the wheel is sticking out 
crowd so that the top of the tyre is tucked under the wheel arch is the guard, but the bottom sticks out a little bit. That helps get the tyre, the Yokohama tyre, flat on the road when you're cornering, and that's what's called camber. And that little bit of angle makes the bottom of the wheel slightly vulnerable to side-by-side -side contact, and that's exactly what happened. It was the briefest, Ooh, the slightest of touches. I'm not sure about that. It was a pretty stout whack, I think, and uh, and it was Charlie Lutz. Sprung the steamer on. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty stout. I mean, the car, Charlie Lutz got all of a sudden just stepped out to the left there when he got on the curbing, and uh, he, he must have known, well, perhaps he didn't, that... Uh, that Mark Cavani was already right there on the outside. Yeah, kind it, of, it's know, his side of the car, he'll have known that. He was close enough. And, yeah, and, and the way that he came out of the, the corner, Jeremy, for me, the way that uh, Charlie looked on the inside came out of turn one, he didn't take the normal line, he did pinch it in a little bit, so he was obviously trying to give room, but then, as you say, right at the exit of the corner, um, Mark Cavani, already on the rumble strip, had you know he was as far over as he could to. Yes, there's runoff there, but you're not really supposed to use that. White flag is out, by the way. We will finish under yellow. But then there was just a little final slide by the look car. I think it was deliberate there, but I don't think it was also very smart. No, it was un certainly unlike uh, Charlie, who's leading, no, no, no. by the way. Absolutely. Leading the Masters class points uh, coming into this weekend, and he extended that lead yesterday with his fourth place finish he, he made up some ground he qualified relatively not not as strongly as he, as he normally would do yesterday but came through to finish fourth and uh, he had a 15 point lead over alan metney coming into today's race well that'll be it's going to be cut down because metney's going to win this isn't he bit. yeah he is and michael left is going to finish in second place charlie luck well assuming there's no action from the stewards he will finish third so he'll lose five points of that advantage as we head to the next two races at road america so it'll be down to a 10 point gap between charlie luck and alan metney this will be metney's he's looking at his second win of the season and uh, he's just in his second season of racing is alan metney so he's done a, he's made vast strides over the last 12 months he's, he's really taken it seriously mm. and has been showing very very good speed uh, the bright red safety car has led uh, more laps than anyone else in this eighth round of the porsche gt3 cup challenge usa by yorta harbour the second of two races at the seal and six hours of the glen imza event the imza development series not quite giving us the action that we're used to in this second race. It's the last lap, we will finish under yellow and it will be another win for GTX and for Trenton Estep with Maxwell Root on the podium in second place and Roman De Angelis in third. This could have been a really, really bad weekend for Trenton Estep. Car off into the barriers with a unexpected and heavy rain shower in practice catching him out whilst he was on slick tires it had been wet at the start of the session it got drier everyone went on to slicks and then the rain rolled back in and there was a time on in the early part of the week when Estep must have thought that his weekend had gone really really south but the JDX guys took off all of the front end of the Porsche, the subframe, the bodywork, the whole lot, rebuilt it, replaced it with another one, got the car back out, and he's had good results yesterday and a better one today. The Mark of Army car on its way back to that trailer in the paddock. Mark not having the best of weekends. No, but that was most unfortunate uh, for Mark Kavami. So Trenton Estep, one of the new generation of GT and sports car drivers, ahead of a very young-looking podium today, Jeremy. Estep, Root and De Angelis. Porsche, the next generation, certainly could be. The chequered flag is out. The eighth round of the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama under full course yellow will be won by Trenton Estep and JDX. He comes across to the wall where his team are waiting for him. Maxwell Root in second. Third Roman De Angelis. Root 
taking that position just before this final full course yellow was thrown for the incident between Charlie Luck and Matt Kavame. Victor Gomez inside the top 10 at nine will take gold category. Ahead of him, a couple of three places in sixth. Alan Metney closes down the lead of Charlie Luck in the Platinum Masters Championship. That now just 10 points between Charlie Luck and Alan Metney in Charlie's favour, by the way, presuming that he doesn't get any sanction or penalty for that late contact with the 43 car. Yeah, and in Gold Cup, that is the uh, sixth win of the season for Victor Gomez out of eight races. So he'll now have a 19-point edge over Kurt Fazekas, who had the win yesterday. Another good, strong second-place finish today for Kurt in that number 52 car. In the overall championship standings, Trenton Esther came into the weekend with an 11-point lead over Roman De Angelis. Uh, De Angelis uh, turned the tables yesterday, had the win with Trenton in second place, but today, with Esther winning and De Angelis in third, he's extended that lead now out to an by another two points. So it'll be a 13-point edge between first and second So we head next to Road America. I am the trusty co-pilot. The moving part that moves all 2,000 parts. I am the translator who interprets the road, the permission to take the scenic route, and the guide that gets you there safely. I'm not just any tire. I am a Yokohama. The all-new IMSA app. Whether at home or trackside, get behind the scenes with team and driver access all the time. It's the ultimate in fan experience. Choose your favorite manufacturer and strap in for the ride. With live scoring data, radio commentary, and session results in real time, it's just like you're there in Winner's Circle. The all-new IMSA app. Download it today. Race two at Watkins Glen for the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama, finishing under full course yellow. But that won't bother at all the man who won. Trent and Estef seemed to have it controlled anyway from Maxwell Root and Roman De Angelis on the podium. Victor Gomez in eighth position overall takes the gold category ahead of Kurt Vasekas in second. And Bill Smith takes another podium finish after his uh, lifetime best finish of second in that category yesterday. An up and down weekend for Trent and Estep in the wall on Thursday but on the top of the podium today. It's unbelievable it's definitely one of the highlights of my career this track's given us a lot of problems in the past so to come out victorious is just it's unbelievable I mean I can't say enough about the guys at JDX Racing um, it's a miracle we're even on the grid right now and thanks to them this is this is all for them. Trenton Estep leaves round eight with a 13-point gap to Roman De Angelis. David Coltman is in third, and Max Root doing his championship challenge no harm at all with his results this weekend in platinum. In gold, Victor Gomez with 17 points over Kurt Fazekas and Rob Furriel in third position with Bill Smith moving up into fourth position as we head towards the second part of the season. And that starts at Road America, another great road circuit on the North American continent. And that will provide a very different challenge. It's fast, it's flowing, and it's again in beautiful countryside. Jeremy Shaw was alongside me, John Hindorf, in the IMSA radio and TV booth. It's a big thank you to our hard-working production crew, both here at the track and back at headquarters, and of course to our volunteer marshals, track services and officials, without whom we could go racing. Hope you've enjoyed the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA from upstate New York. Bye for now. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of the International Motorsports Association. We would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.